guys, thanks for checking out Mavericks Arcade. My name is Chuck, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Amazon Music Desktop app as a jukebox application and make it full screen and allow you to use your mouse using your joystick instead of use, needing a mouse and keyboard. Also, I'm going to show you how to use Chrome uh, as a desktop application for your jukebox as well, so you can use sites like Pandora or other sorts of music sites in your arcade. So to do this, the first thing I did is I created two PowerShell scripts. And let me go ahead and switch over. And apparently, I forgot to do this last time where I rec did record this entire video already. Uh, but I forgot to switch to the screen. So I'm now re-recording it for you. So what we have is over here, I have a folder called PowerShell scripts. Now I've already installed the Amazon Music desktop application but I'm using this PowerShell script to launch it. So let me show you what that looks like. This first part allows us to maximize, minimize, so forth, other windows. And then this is a section that is, it does say keylogger, but it's so that we can track hitting the escape key or not. It's not actually logging any data. It's just code that would otherwise be used in a keylogger. Let me see here, but we're grabbing a hook to get the key. So then what happens here is the first thing it does is it launches the Amazon Music application, then waits four seconds, and then what it's doing is it's looking for the application named Amazon Music, and it's maximizing that window. Now when we run it, you will see a little bit of gap down at the bottom, and that is because the toolbar is disappearing, and it doesn't resize after that. So then what it does is it's saying as long as the process is running, it's looking for us to press the escape key, which is right here. If it is pressed, it's gonna kill the process for Amazon Music. Of course, once the process is killed, this waiting function will stop and we'll hit the end of our script and it'll all be done and happy. So that is how it is able to launch the application. And again, escape is the key that I use in all my emulators to end the emulation. So this is the script allows me to launch the desktop application, which is normally a small little window, and to make sure that it's always going to be maximized to take up the whole screen. It's then going to allow me to use my normal exit button to close out my Amazon Music app. Moving on, the other script is for Chrome. And what it does is it allows us to pass a variable of the URL that we want to go to to this script and that is gonna happen in the uh, front end, but the script is, is made to handle multiple types of requests. So the first thing you can see it's doing is it's getting what that URL is and throwing it into a string. This does not have the minimize options or any of that code in there. I've stripped that out. It's just the key logger next. Then what happens is it actually launches the Chrome application then points the URL, but it launches in kiosk mode. Now this option here is supposed to prevent us from asking about restoring pages or not, but that doesn't work correctly. It's then doing the same thing the other application did. It's looking for um, whether or not the process is still running. If it is, it's waiting for us to press the escape key. If we do press the escape key, it stops the process for Chrome. And again, this kiosk mode is what allows the application to go full screen without showing little floating windows all over the place. So it'll look nice and be functional. Now, the way we're getting the functionality where we don't need a mouse and keyboard is because we're using, again, Joy to Key. So let me go pull that up and show you how I'm using Joy to Key. So first thing is this profile jukebox application is associated to whenever the Amazon Music application is loaded, it will go into this profile for jukebox applications. Also, whenever Chrome is running, it will set up the mouse for jukebox applications. And then what that jukebox application mode looks like is the D-pad on the joystick emulates mouse movement of uh, 30, uh, movements left, right, up, down. The start button is the pause toggle button. The 
Um, select button is mute. The shoulder buttons on the SNES controller are um, previous track, next track. I have the mouse wheel. Um, so, sorry, keep saying um. So the bottom two buttons, what is normally B and A, are left click, right click. The upper two buttons are page up, page down. So that's the functionality there. And then let me show you how we put this. Um, well, once you've performed the configurations and run them, LED Blinky would have the gameplay animation set for audio animation, as discussed in our last video. And then the gameplay animation boxes checked for only for jukebox. And now we're going to look at our controls editor. And in our controls editor, we have under jukebox, we have one for Amazon Music. And the only control we're defining is the quick control. Now I did, I did notice that I did not have the word in here for quick. So we're going to set that in there. And then we're going to look at the Pandora option. And again, I have quit the quit button set up in there and the name Pandora. And in both cases, this box for jukebox is checked. So the next step is in the arcade software to show you how that's configured. So again, the scripts make sure that the applications are full screen. Joy to key is allowing us to use a joystick as a mouse. And then the scripts, well, I already talked about the scripts. And then uh, the LED blinky is configured to have the stop button lit up red, because that is our quit button. But otherwise, it will do jukebox selection for audio animation. So the images and everything like that, I have uh, downloaded myself. I'm not sharing those because those are not my images to share, but the scripts I will share in the uh, description. But the launch Amazon music script is extremely easy. You just point to the PS1 script here and everything else is automatic. One thing to be aware of though is the startup and pause screens. They do need, you do need to check override the default options and make sure that they are not enabled. We do not want those screen transitions because it will mess up the order of our windows. So again, we have them checked and we have the newer types of screens disabled. And in this application, the only thing that needs to be configured is the uh, path. Or the uh, script file right there. Now for Pandora, it's a little more complicated because it's actually launching the Chrome script. And what you do is we're launch, we're pointing to PowerShell, and then we're pointing to the direct path of the launch Chrome PS1 file, space, and then within quotes we put in the name of the website we want to go to. The folder path for the root folder is where. The PowerShell exists. And then finally, just like the other setting, we want to check the box to overwrite the default behavior. And then we want to make sure that it's unchecked so we do not have those new screens up here. Now, once we've done that, I have disabled the channel so you're not going to hear the music going out because I don't want to get any copyright strikes. But you will see the lights so you'll know that the sound is coming out. So this is an old Sesame Street Smarties. It's the count counting now. Seven, eight, ah, 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 ah. It's an old uh, techno Sesame Street style song. So you can see it was pulsing to the music correctly. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit escape, which is my emulator's uh, quick command. And as you can see, the arcade is showing the one red button is lit which is the back out button on the arcade. You can also hear the joysticks are trying to go back to their previous configuration. So then the next application is Pandora. And we're going to go ahead and launch that. I'm just say, I don't know if I launched or not. Oh, I hit a, but I'm in the, I'm not in big box right now. It is asking me to restore, which 
I don't like, but you can see it went straight into plane. It's full screen and it's Pandora. The red button is solid and lit. And I'm going to hit the escape key. As you can see, it closed and went right back to here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and launch Big Box, and then I'm going to go over to that side. You may not be able to hear me well, but I'm going to use the joystick, the NES joystick, to launch and control the jukebox. Let's launch Big Box here. There we go. Takes a second. All right, so now I'm going to go launch it there. All right, so I'm going to go here. And then once I launch Pandora, see, I've got my down here. Again, it's my mouse, so I can pause, pause, and then extract. Run it back out. I'm going to do the same thing with mute Amazon. Of course, Amazon does allow me to back out and go forward on tracks much easier. And, uh, Now I'm going to do a forward track. You can see it's dropping down. Now we're going to go ahead and close it. So as you can see, that is the um, Amazon Music and Pandora configured in the arcade in a way that you can use the controller as a mouse and the lights dance and they're full screen and they're not like little windowed applications. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Check it out and uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any questions, of course, I'm always around. Let me know. Thank you again. Make sure to check out the links above for some of my other videos and definitely smash that subscribe button. Also, make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any episodes. I'm continually trying to grow this channel, so make sure to like, comment, and share on all your favorite social media platforms. To find more content for this channel, check out the following locations. YouTube is the primary location where I publish the final versions of my how-to videos. I use Facebook for communication notices about upcoming videos, behind the scenes pictures and videos, and the occasional live stream. For live streams, I primarily use Twitch, as it generally provides the least latency for the closest to real-time response rate currently available. I will occasionally multicast to Facebook and Twitch at the same time, but Twitch generally seems to have the least delay, so I prefer it for streaming events. And as always, thank you guys for watching, I appreciate your support, and we'll see you next time.